What do you think the strongest magic in Arcane Odyssey is? Some might say something simple like metal or lightning magic. Some may be a bit more clever to say Aether or even Phoenix magic, but no. The most powerful and feared magic with powers to destroy even entire kingdoms and countries, the Sea Crystals. What are Sea Crystals to begin with? Well, for you Arcane Adventure veterans, you might remember them as it was the Peacekeeper's goal of destroying or obtaining all the Sea Crystals, and the Peacekeeper was the name for you the player in Arcane Adventures. Another key thing about the curses is that they are basically a type of magic for each type of basic, lost, or ancient magic when those get added, such as fire, wind, or lightning. But once obtained, these sea curses give immense power one could only dream of obtaining. Basically like taking the stats for something simple like water magic, but making that a hundred times stronger for the sea curse. However, there are some clear exceptions to that rule, like the growth or absorption curse, which don't really fall under a basic magic, which are more known as external curses. Sea curses mainly appear in the world as large cubes of pure magic, and when touched, the curse user would become one with their element, which grants immortality from natural death. Additionally, when absorbed, sea curses are unable to be separated from the user until they die, with some notable exceptions. And with all that, let's talk about every single sea curse we at least know at the moment. The first one is obviously Morden, whose title is literally the Curse Thief. He was basically able to get the information on where the Death Curse was in the also feared Dark Sea and obtain it before Calvis could. We haven't got too much information or a showcase of how the Death Curse would function all that much, but by the wiki, it states that the curse could allow the user to conjure and manipulate death at will. Next, we got the Cloud Curse, whose user was formerly a bringer before getting the curse removed by Argus's Devourer, which plot twist has the ability to remove a curse from its user. Unfortunately, we haven't really gotten to see what the curse could really do in game, but all we know is that the curse allows one to control and manipulate and transform into clouds. Being able to transform into clouds makes me have no idea how Bringer could have gotten kidnapped with a power like that, but hey, whatever. Next we got General Julian who has the glass curse. We've gotten to see a bit of its power which allows the user to conjure and manipulate and transform into glass at will, which though sounds pretty stupid and weak on paper, when shown in game can be considerably powerful. Finally, we have the Growth Curse, whose user is Randall, the tree man you might know him as. All we see at the moment is that Randall can turn himself into a tree. Yeah, sounds stupid, but the properties of the curse states that it allows the user to control and transform into forms of nature, like trees or grass. So with the canonically proven Z curses, we now have the possible curse users. People who we suspect have Z curses, but aren't proven or disproven yet. First, we have Ren or Warren, one of the side characters in Arcane Odyssey you might encounter, who possibly might have the Infernal Curse, which would allow the user to utilize and transform into blue fire, which is much more intense than any type of fire in the universe. Additionally, the curse is one of the five grand fire curses. Then we have Nero Caesar, the first king of Ravenna, whose possible curse we don't know all that much about, but all we know is that this sea curse allows Caesar to completely completely eradicate Wintervale, a rival kingdom of Ravenna. However, we are able to see a bit of whatever the sea curse Caesar had in our fight against King Calvis IV, where in his second boss phase, Calvis reveals he's going to use a fraction of his grandfather's power, knowing that Calvis probably had some of that sea curse somehow passed down to him. With that, we've gone through all the sea curses for Arcane Odyssey specifically. However, if we stop tunnel visioning on Arcane Odyssey, we can discover a crap ton of other sea curses, notably out outside of Arcane Odyssey, so buckle in because there's a whole lot. The Absorption Curse, whose user was formerly Durza, until you, the Peacekeeper in Arcane Adventures, absorbed after killing Durza. This curse allows one to absorb the energy from others and allows the user to steal magics and sea curses from a fallen enemies. Okay, lightning round. These type of curses are kind of the basic magic version, so I'ma just go through these fairly quickly. The Fire Curse, absorbed by Rupin formerly. The Magma Curse, absorbed by Trango the Volcano. The 
Light Curse, absorbed by Averil, the Shining Knight, the Ice Curse, the Blaze Curse, and the Tide Curse, which allows one to control entire oceans, and the Energy Curse, which allows one to never run out of stamina. All these curses are owned by Arthur, the Curse Beard, which are all obtained by forcing Prometheus to create the Sea Curses. Okay, spear on over, let's go back to the more interesting curses. The Promethean Flame Curse, originally owned by Murak Creed, formerly, which allows one to control and transform into white Promethean flames, considered to be the strongest curse in existence. Then finally we have the Lazarus Curse, which is owned by Freedrop, which allows a user upon death to revive and multiply in power. And with that, now you know a bit more on the true power of sea curses. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in this next video.